Hey everybody, what's up? It's Hold the Truth Hostage where if the truth was so important, we wouldn't negotiate with lies. Now this video is a request by um, Doodle Squash, you know, correct me if I said that wrong man, but uh, Doodle Squash, he basically told me man, make a f top five, you know, things men need to know in modern society you know I usually don't do this type of stuff usually don't do a top five you know what I mean but um you know I guess like I said man th this is why I said y'all guys gotta make some requests to you know help me get out of my predictable zone or format but um the top five things I think guys should know off the top of my head and I'll arrange them in a number. You know, I'll try to make sure that the numbers are as close to importance. I think the number one thing guys should know in modern society today, the number one thing guys should know is that man's oldest hobby was traveling. Man's oldest hobby was traveling. Now, why do I bring up traveling? as the number one thing guys should know in modern society is that I was talking to some guys, you know, some guys in the black pill community that, uh, you know, black pill really got me into that word called travel maxing. Now the guys talk about travel maxing is basically, you know, go to a location or uh, go to a country where you can optimize your your and maximize your earnings and the reason I say the number one thing guys should know is that traveling was man's oldest hobby is that one of the major issues a lot of men face when it comes to finding something they want and bettering their life is that they're not able to move they're not able to travel and leave be it their state be it their country a lot of men are not comfortable with traveling you know and that's one of the biggest weaknesses they um ex you know extort on men is that oh man you know you leave the you leave the united states you go anywhere else you're a failure you know what i'm saying you couldn't make it here you you're a bum you're a failure they use that shaming language to shame you and condition you that leaving your country or traveling outside of your country is weakness and failure. And then they use this to force this false narrative of nationalism. You know, like they, they got a lot of guys, you know, saying, oh, man, you know, I want to be an American. Yeah, yeah you know. A lot of guys that are choosing to remain, choosing to be trapped due to their nationalism. You know what I'm saying? Like they have so much pride and love for their country, even though the laws of their country, all the agenda of their country, shout out to Gillette, shout out to all the things that tell men, you know, you're something's wrong with you for being a man, you know? So your whole country, and, and the thing is men are being you know, avalanche, they're being attacked on all aspects, mentally, physically, they're telling men what they should accept, you know, body shaming, they're telling men on a mental aspect what it means to be a man, let's, let's reform what it means to be masculinity, you know what I'm saying, toxic masculinity, all this and that, it's a lot of attacks and they get away with it because they know that you're trapped mentally they have you locked on a nationalistic aspect where you're all about nationalism and you, you're not even aware of the true meaning of nationalism and, and the true creation of it is that it's men the men the men agree to something and over time as the men all come together under a similar routine what does that routine become it becomes nationalism the the stuff the men accept, the stuff the men will like, the stuff the men will respect, and so on. That's why you see 
patriotism is outright falling off the face of the earth. That's why you see in, in America right now, there's a lot of issues with patriotism where they're openly people not, you know what I'm saying, standing up for the flag. Uh, people basically are unproud of their patriotism or don't even display any because patriotism is man-made. And, and the sign that patriotism is going out of whack is a sign you know, of course, there could be war and all that crap. We know those. But the sign is that the men are no longer invested in their country. The men are being pushed out. The men are being discriminated against. And the men are being pushed negativity towards them. I mean, there's over how many TED Talks where, you know, wearing a dress is masculine. You know what I'm saying? That there, there's so many things that are destroying the meaning of manhood. So... You know, you have to understand that man's oldest hobby was traveling. That's the number one thing men need to know. Because once you're aware of traveling, you are no longer grounded or over loyal to where you are. You're only loyal to the opportunity because your priority will always be that I have to travel. You know what I'm saying? Traveling is my number one thing in life. You know what I'm saying? Because I've been chilling with talking to a couple buddies. Uh, shout out to QB. You know what I mean? Uh, the travel max and legend. You know what I mean? Uh, the, you know, you're doing it out there. So you have to travel. That's what you got to set your mind on. Once a man's mind is set on traveling, you'll start having... I made a video called Mobility is Freedom. But I think what you need as a man is a mover's mindset. What I mean by a mover's mindset is that you do not buy anything that will keep you stationary. For example, your car is mobile, your phone is mobile, you know what I'm saying? Your laptop's mobile, so why isn't your home mobile? As in, your home is mobile. You must be free. The only time you should keep a home is if you own the land. If you own the land, it makes sense. You know what I'm saying? You can sell it. You could do what you got to do with it. You own the land. You can renovate it, whatever. But as a man investing in an apartment, a house, when you, we all know how the states are going along with all this agenda, all this all this gender crap, all this and that, that's, that's messing up the hiring on merit, all this corruption that's going on, you as a man have to be mobile. That's why... You must look into that traveling is man's oldest hobby. You know, our ancestors would travel to more fertile ground. They would travel to better ground. They would travel to follow their prey. And your prey now is success. Because let's be honest, wherever a man lives, he's not more loyal to where he lives than the opportunity. Because as soon as you say, hey man, I'm trying to find a job, trying to find the best job possible, that automatically means you're more loyal to where the employment lies than the location. And the fact that the country's doing so much stupid agenda, propaganda, and all this crap to where merit and stability and normality are gone. And it's an anti-male cesspool with you can't even turn on the TV without, you're a man. You didn't look in the mirror. You're a man. By God, you you know what you are. You're you're a man. You're naturally evil. You're a demon. You're a demon. You're a man. Yeah, shout out, shout out to Gillette. You know what I'm saying? Gillette, the the best a man can can't get. Well, well, Gillette, the best example of. In fact, let me flip it. Gillette, the best example of the best anti-male ad. That you could get, yeah. So, to me, man, the number one thing in a modern society is your uh, your awareness of traveling. Because as soon as you have traveling in mind is your priority. Your priority has to be traveling. Then nothing can trap you. Because you'll always calculate, well, man, let's say for, I'll give you a long-term relationship, for example. Oh, she wants to get a house in this city, mm, 
damn, that would lock me down into the mortgage, that would lock me down into the house, lock me down into the state. Ah, nah, man, I'm mobile. I'm, I'm all about that travel, Max, and I'm a traveler first. Yeah, actually, yeah, you got to be a traveler first. I can't just stay one place, man. I got to chase a better opportunity, a better location to maximize my uh, opportunity and potential. So to me, the number one thing a man should know in modern society and prioritize is traveling first. You know, that's got to be number one. Now, number two, number two is, is in my honest opinion, number two applies to both young boys and uh, males in general is that you have to look at the suffering of other men as a first person encounter you know one of the biggest issues we have and you could see it in the men in the country and what's going on is that a lot of men are not looking at the suffering or the failure of other men as something that occurred and can occur to them so a lot of men need to start looking at another man's experience and actually internalizing it they gotta start internalizing it because one of the problems we have we're you know we're men it's natural that we're uh, very competitive and you know individualistic so we'll look at what other men go through and say oh, that's that's what he went through you know what i'm saying that's what he went through that's not my problem and to me with the with the way this country is right now a lot of men need to do research on what's happening to other men especially from uh <clears throat> from the family court perspective from the divorce perspective uh, long-term relationships a lot of men need to go look at that and actually mentally because you know we have a strong imagination you have to mentally internalize that you got to you got to run it like a mental simulation like what happened to this man happened to you and you have to avoid it at all cost so a lot of men need to internalize what's going on and happen to a lot of to other men you know what i mean because once you can internalize it and mentally internalize it you'll seek to avoid it you know we men need to not put our hand on the fire to get burned you know what i'm saying we need to look at a man who got burned and say oh yeah, I ain't gonna repeat that. And it and it and here's the thing, you have to internalize it and remove emotion from it. You have to remove emotion. A lot of men will repeat the sins of another man, the the failure of another man out of emotion. You know what I'm saying? Out of an emotional act. And you have to as a man in modern society remove your emotions and internalize, mentally internalize what other men have gone through. You know, you listen to their stories and you have to ask yourself, if you were in their position, how could you recover? How could you recover from it and could you recover? You know what I'm saying? We have to start internalizing what other men have gone through and you have to remove emotion and what i mean by emotion you have to remove the the bs we've been fed overfed which is love and all this trash man that's all this emotional clouding when the law the law does not recognize love man love is not in the law you know what i mean you will not get a a lesser offense a lesser charge because you know you did it i've I've done it out of love, fine sir, I did it, I married her out of love, and uh, I deserve more respect and honor, for I made a woman out of her, I made a, you know, you, you gotta remove love, you know, you men, you gotta start operating with far less emotion, and you have to internalize, you know what I mean, like right now, I'll be real with you, I've I've internalized a lot of things other men have gone through and it's it's kind of and I run a lot of mental simulations where I'm trying to calculate what they went through uh, if I could survive what they went through 
And uh, it's at the point where whenever a man does something stupid, you know what I mean? Something uh, stupid, for example, long-term, you know, relationship or, you know, uh, fighting to trying to change the laws for men and all this stuff, you know what I mean? Uh, marriage, whatever, I internalize that. It's like uh, it triggers, it triggers a shield in me, you know what I'm saying? It just, just gets me to shake a little, like, oh, man, this dude's done. He just sacrificed his life. You know, I've internalized a lot of things. It's kind of like someone someone died. You know, whenever I hear a man overinvestment in emotion, it's like I just heard someone died. You know what I mean? You, I mentally start mourning for their passing. Like, oh, damn. He, oh, he did what? He got emotionally invested. Oh, God, why? Another one lost, another man lost to his emotions, you know. So, you know, number two, you have to start internalizing and internalizing what other men have gone through in this system. You have to internalize it and you have to become far less emotional. You have to. You got to remove emotion out of the plate. And it's to the point. I would say for number two, you have to cut out any form. I would say for about a month. See what happens to your mind in a month. For a month, you have to stop as a man watching anything with romance. If it has romance in it, you cut it out. You cut it out of your system. That means no romantic comedies, uh, no movies where the hero just... I have to save the woman I love. You have to cut out emotion from your mental, um, from your mental uh, meal. You have to cut it out of your mental meal. You have to cut out emotion. You have to get back to your stability, because men are being fed so much negative information, force-fed emotion, and, and emotion creates an invisible wound, a wound that cannot heal. Because it's emotional and they try to trigger it. It's become to the point where they're trying to identify you based on your emotional wound. I was bullied in high school. So I've, I'm a bully survivor. Dude, high school was 10 years ago and, I've, and the bully even moved out of town. You're, you're no longer bullied. Dude, it's okay for you to remember it. Try not to forget, but be aware that you're no longer bullied anymore. So you as a man, what you have to do to internalize what other men are going through and to, uh, you know, run, and I would say run mental simulations, like mentally think about any way you could have survived that, you know what I mean? Any way you could have succeeded through that, you know what I'm saying? And you have to remove emotion. Do not make any, you know, investment with emotion, you know what I'm saying, do not invest in emotion, you have to become what we were, you know what I'm saying, a lot of men were just stone, you know, you were, you only showed emotion when you had to, you have to stop investing in emotion, that's number two, number two, internalize, number dose, internalize what other men have been through, run mental simulations of it, and try to uh, remove emotion, man. You got to remove emotion out of the equation. And you have to at least, I would say for a month, you know what I'm saying? They got a, what is that? A lot of guys are doing a no fap, whatever. You need to do the, the no emotion, you know what I'm saying? For a month, no, no emotion challenge. You know, the no emotion challenge. Do not watch anything with romantic comedy. Anything where romance is the lead, where the man is, yo, man, I'm doing this out of the love for her and this, that's, you know, that's weakness. That's a man not being able to move on, and it's projecting that a man's entire life should be based around love, which means that man should be delusional on emotion and making his decisions on emotion. So that's number two. Now, number three... And number three could have easily been, you know, yeah, number three, yeah. It's number three. Number three. 
with the uh, ashy knuckles. You know what I'm saying? Number three would be, in all honesty, all men. I would say all males, man, in this modern age. I would say you have to read. I would say you have to read these three books, man. You know, I'm, I'm working on one myself, so I can't include it because, you know, it hasn't been written. But I would say you have to read that 48 Laws of Dating. You have to read that Black Pill book. And you have to read uh, the, you know, the Free Agent Lifestyle. You have to read these three books. Because here's the thing. All men should arrive to the Black Pill. In all honesty, men, that's what number three really is. Number three is you have to... In this modern age, you can't, the red pill isn't enough. The red pill information, like I said, I made a, I made a video called Blue Pill, Red Pill, Purple Pill. You know what I'm saying? And you have to take the black pill first, man. You know, you're either going to, and I would even say, even before going MGTOW, you know, if MGTOW's on there, I would say take the black pill first. You know, and that's why you have to read that book, um... 48 Laws of Dating, uh, The Black Pill, and uh, you have to, you know, read The Free Agent Lifestyle by, you know, Coach Greg Adams. I read it. It's a pretty good book. You know what I mean? It's not the, you know, it's good enough to get you going. And you have to, as a man, I'd say you have to arrive to The Black Pill. The reason a man needs to arrive to The Black Pill, it goes back to number one, which is traveling. You have to prioritize traveling because what the black pill allows you to do and i was gonna mention this and i still will on my black pill video where i go more in depth but what the black pill allows you to do is it allows you to operate outside of society like when you watch the matrix you saw him you know morpheus offered him the blue pill the red pill and you know uh cypher was the one who invented the purple pill, whatever, trying to return, you know. So, to me, you have to understand that all these pills operate within that society. Like, if you look at a lot of red pillars, they'll tell you, oh, man, you got to succeed. You got to make money in this society. You got to, you know what I'm saying? You have to be a champion in this society. You know what I mean? Red pill, purple pill guys will tell you the same thing. You got to succeed in this society. And the MGTOW guys will tell you to just walk around aimlessly in this society. You know what I'm saying? Because their whole, you know, having been one myself, having, when I followed the ideology a lot, I would find out that I'm offering some alternatives that are different. You know what I'm saying? Is that the MGTOW guys will just kind of tell you to just avoid everybody and kind of walk around in society you know what i'm saying like a nomad within a society that's what MGTOW will tell you but um number three you have to arrive at the black pill i would say you got to take it first because unlike all the previous the blue the purple pill the red pill and MGTOW the black pill is a study of existing outside of of that society outside of that society's politics and so on you see a red pill guy still exists just like in the matrix where they were fighting morpheus and all of them were fighting the matrix and all that stuff fighting it a black pill guy would be man we're existing outside of the matrix we we don't really we'll look at it we'll make sure we keep an eye on it but we're not really prioritizing the matrix or trying to fix it or none of that, you know, just, you know what I mean, just let it go about its way, and uh, we'll look for a better location, a better place, the black pill is about existing outside of society's validation, you know what I'm saying, Not, in a broke, why would you look for acceptance in a broken society, an openly anti-male society, an openly anti-family society, an openly anti-normal society, you know what I'm saying, a pro-destructive society, so to me, number three, men have to arrive at the black pill, you have to take it first, because the red pill, it's not sufficient enough, 
You know what I mean? And in all honesty, like I said in my previous video, society naturally red pills you anyway. It naturally purple pills you anyway. But with how much the risks, how high the risks have become where they're openly, you know, all over TV calling for the, you know, men's heads. You know what I mean? That's what they're doing. If you watch the TV, how they're demonizing men, one left and right, just demonizing them. You know what I'm saying? So what you got to do as a man, and, and a fine example is that was when that guy was going to have the straight parade. They had a straight parade. They got mad conflict. They got mad conflict for doing a straight parade. Think about that. The majority of people, the mass majority are, or shall I use the super majority, are straight. And, and instead of celebrating, instead of seeing a positive of a straight parade where it was about being straight, which is unifying all races, yo, don't worry about. You know, even though you're black, I'm white, you're Indian, you're Arab, you're Muslim, you're a Christian, you're a whatever, we're all straight. Let's come together and just celebrate and unify on that. And what they did, they demonized that. So to me, as a man in the modern age with how much, how much open extortion there is and support for it against men, you have to, number three, take the black pill. You have to take the black pill. It's it's now it's mandatory because the thing is the society's adapting. It's already adapted to the red pill, the purple pill, and that's basically what it is. The society is, is a three pill society. Blue pilled is you're completely ignorant to everything. You're born blue pill. You know, you're not aware of how the society works. Then the red pill is the information about society's corruption and the laws and all that crap, then you're purple pilled by society because society will openly tell you, yes, we know the the child support laws are, are broken, but you should invest anyway in having children because you're you'd love to have children. And uh, you know, you might lose them. So to me, number three, guys have to take the black pill. You know what I'm saying? It's number three. You have to. They're it's a matter of mental survival right now. There's a lot of men. It's increased the rate of uh, men getting a rope necklace or and or a wrist knife. You know what I'm saying? A lot of guys are getting those. And why are they getting that? Because the thing is this. A lot more people are red-pilled than ever before, purple-pilled, whatever. But operating within a broken society, trying to make changes and obtain validation, it's a waste of time. You know what I'm saying? It's a waste of time. Number three, you have to arrive at the black pill. You got to take it. You know, and I would say the three books you want to start off with, The 48 Laws of Dating, because he puts a lot of black pill knowledge in there. And then the black pill book by the writer, The 48 Laws of Dating, you know, Wallace, you know what I mean? And I would say for you to read free agent lifestyle as well because the free agent lifestyle I was reading it it shows you what happens when a man follows all of the you know what I'm saying all of the standards that society pushes on you you know and it shows you that it leads to a trap so number three you have to take number three you got to take the black pill you got to take it number three because they'll teach you how to operate outside of society for example a black pill guy will look at the marriage rates here and say, uh, that's not my problem. I was never going to get married here, so it's not my problem at all. I'll, I'll be aware of it, but I'm, I'm not my problem. I'll go overseas. I'll travel to get that done if I want to start a family. The black pill is all about looking at society from the outside in. You know what I mean? You're not vested. You're not really vested. Let's face it, legally, you know, the MRA, men's rights activists, you know what I mean, they failed because they ignored the fact that the male vote has been bypassed by the female vote. And uh broken you know, uh broken uh check and balance when it comes to sex is voting. So you're not gonna change nothing. You know what I'm saying? And you know, one thing I give MGTOW is they say walk away, you know, which is great. MGTOW will teach you how to walk away and ghost you know what I mean? As you walk away, as you could see from the, the birth rate decline, 
You know what I mean? It's working. A lot of men are just saying, you know what? We're taking our uh, we're taking our wood and leaving. You know what I'm saying? We're not gonna invest in. We're not gonna give our wood away. You know so. A lot of men are doing that, but MGTOW, the problem with MGTOW, like I said, I'll probably make a video for it soon. The problem with MGTOW is it's too much, it's still within the domestic realm, you know what I'm saying? It's still a domestic mind. It's about, really, MGTOW ends up, you're playing Pac-Man your whole life. If you go full MGTOW, you're playing Pac-Man. Oh, man, just avoid, dodge, avoid, avoid, dodge, avoid, avoid not too many will give you solutions, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, like I said, you know, the third third thing you got to do as a man in modern society is take the black pill. You got to take it because the risks are higher now, you know what I'm saying? When MGTOW started back in 2016 or 14, it wasn't so openly anti-male, you know what I'm saying? As it got more and more, got more anti-male. To a point where you can't turn on a television and not expect something anti-male to be said. Some anti-male thing to be said on a film. To be shown some chick with no superpowers beating up grown men. Overwhelming. There's so much anti-male, effeminized male practices. So you have to take the black pill because you can't afford, can't afford the fallacies of the red and the purple pill that still operate within the society. The black pill will keep you out of the society. Now, number four. Number four, guys. Number four. Number four. Now, number four, I was going to originally do a video on this, but, you know, uh, it's a whole new theory. You have to, right after you take the black pill, after you've ingested it, you have to take the gold pill. And what is the gold pill? I was going to do a video on it to explain it more, and I plan to, I will. So I plan to do a video called, um, you know, black pill, gray pill, gold pill. You know what I mean? But number four is men have to take the gold pill. You know, that's number four. Right after you take the black pill and... You get used to looking for solutions outside of your country, looking for solutions outside of your society and your nationalism. You have to absorb and take the gold pill. The gold pill is the global minded pill. It's the global. You see, if you look at all the pill theories in the manosphere, they, they're all not only based on male behavior, but also based on uh, geo-economical behavior. So the red pill, the blue pill, the red pill, the purple pill are all domestic. They're all domestic-minded men that are seeking solutions within their domestic country. You know what I'm saying? So they're all trapped with a domestic mind state. You know what I'm saying? That's what the blue pill, the purple pill, and red pill are about. Then the black pill is really, they're aware of the domestic issues and they're trying to leave the domestic issues and go somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? Find other solutions. So the black pill will always push a man to find the solutions for his domestic problems overseas by traveling, as I stated in number one. You have to be traveling. Traveling has to be your priority and it has to define who you are. Like a lot of your solutions, a lot of your uh, stances has to promote your ability to travel. You know what I'm saying? So you have to take the gold pill. And what is the gold pill? The gold pill or AKA the global pill. You know what I'm saying? The global pill is when a man arrives at a global minded scenario where this man's entire mind is always calculating and looking at the globe which means this man is an earthling when you take the gold pill and you become an earthling you know what i'm saying you're not an american you're not a european you're not a a, a mexican you're not a indian you're not an african you're an earthling 
You see, the global pill is the global mind. And the global pill, the gold pill, I mean, is when you take that global minded approach. And when you become global minded, and the reason you have to take the black pill before you take the gold pill is that when you become, when you reach the point where you only care about the earth and what's going on and where you can go to seek out what you want, you do not care about anything from a domestic perspective at all. You see where the black pill is trying to solve your domestic issues with um, foreign solutions. You know what I'm saying? Black pill is all about trying to solve your domestic issues with foreign solutions. While the gold pill is you have only one issue, and that's the globe. So that's unless the world's in danger of a meteor, you know what I'm saying, and an extreme level poisoning or an extreme global ending event, you do not care. You don't care about any na nation or nothing, you know, because you can always move out of there. You know what I'm saying? For example, let's say you're, a, you know, uh, here's an example, you know, a red pill and a purple pill guy walk into, uh, walk into a grocery and say, oh man, the fruit's. The fruits are not fresh enough. You know what I'm saying, man? The American fruit isn't fresh enough. There's all this stuff put in it, you know, GMO, and they just keep complaining. The black pill guy will be, ah, you know, man, the fruits here are not good, but I could get some fruits overseas. You know, the gold pilled guy is, eh, you know what I mean? This is all that's available because I'm here right now, but usually I'd go I'd be in another country eating the freshest fruits so I, I don't see the problem you know the only problem is that I'm just here but you know the gold pill is all about existing in a global mind when you exist in a global mind you exist in the level of solutions once you once you take the gold pill there are no more focusing on issues you only know solutions you only care about you only speak about global solutions you know what i'm saying you don't speak as small-minded as the other pills you know what i'm saying the black pill you don't speak because your whole focus is on the globe you're an earthling once you become an earthling as a man nothing you know nations don't matter because you're always looking to go somewhere on the earth where there's a better opportunity or you just feel like going there. You know what I'm saying? And that's the global minded man. Once you become a global minded, an earthling, and I made a video on that called, you know, be, you know what I'm saying? I think it was, I forgot the title, but it was something about earth or being an earthling. So once you take the gold pill, man, you become a man of solutions nothing bothers you, you know what I'm saying, and I've arrived at that point where, you know, uh, you know, I eventually took the gold pill, there's another pill beyond that, but that one's too, you know, that's, that's something else, but, uh, once you take the gold pill, you live in solutions, you do not look at domestic problems, you look at globalized problems, you look at it as, oh man, the whole world is, is, pumping out this agenda, then you would have a problem. Then you'd be like, damn, man, there's an anti-male agenda around the globe. Oh, this is a problem. But that isn't so. You know, other countries where they don't have that problem, their culture isn't like that. So when you're a global-minded man, you exist in solutions. You know that if you're, in example, you're in the UK or the US or Australia where it's too anti-male to the government's too invested in your um you know your situation as a family man and its government is overstepping its boundaries a global-minded man will be well uh, that's this country you know, that's not other countries i'm out i'm gonna go where I, i'm gonna go where i where where i get what i want so you know that's this country's problem that ain't that ain't my problem you know what i'm saying only problem exists is if I'm invested in this country and, and the gold pill, these type of men, once you've arrived at the gold pill, you do not have any more domestic problems. 
You know what I'm saying? Because your whole world is the globe. The whole world is earth. You're an earthling now. Once you've reached that earthling level of clarity in your mind, you realize that, yo, there's always a solution somewhere. Somewhere, there's always a solution in some country or whatever. You know what I'm saying? You become a man of solutions. You know what I mean? You're not bound by your domestic setting anymore. Because, like I said, the red pill, the blue pill, and the purple pill, they're all domesticated issues. You know what I'm saying? They're domesticated issues. And the black pill is all about solving your domestic issues with potent, with foreign solutions and then there's there's of course the pill i discovered you know uh, called the gray pill the gray pill is basically a guy that knows the solution is going overseas because he has all the black pill awareness but he still will reinvest in domestic validation and seeking out domestic solutions when there are no solutions at all and it just becomes reinvesting in domestic problems so you as a man, you have to, you know what I'm saying? You have to, have to take the black pill. There are no books yet. Working on, I will be working on a book soon called uh, Pillosophy, where I go over a lot of different pills and manosphere terms and try to, you know, I got finished reading the black pill book. I got finished writing my first book, my second book, called man vantage but um basically man you have to take the glow the gold pill after you take the black pill there is not much information on the gold pill beyond me explaining this to you i plan to make a a video on the gold pill but uh after you take the black pill you become you have to take have to take the gold pill and the gold pill you become a global minded man once you're global minded domestic issues do not you do not care you become absolutely mentally uninvolved at all you know what i'm saying become uninvolved completely become uninvolved to the point where you know you're not even ghost you you become a living embodiment when you're in a situation or a country or location uh you know the solution isn't there at all you become the embodiment of a ghost. And what does that embodiment mean? It's like you're there, but you're not. You know, people see you. People are complaining about the country's issues, and you do not give a damn. You don't care. As long as it doesn't affect your your ability to travel and wander around the earth, you don't care. You know what I'm saying? And because there's always a solution somewhere on the earth. Maybe a different country, different continent, there's always a solution. And when you arrive at the gold pill, you know what I'm saying, you become a mentally, and you reach a level I call the flat line. I reached this uh, mental way of thinking probably two to three years ago. The flat line is when you're just balanced, you know. The flat line, it just, you're balanced. You, you're never too upset. You're never too happy. You're just existing in the middle as a flat line. And if you think of a flat line, the flat line can support things above it and it can hide things under. You know what I'm saying? A flat line is balanced. And what happens when you reach a flat line is you become numb to the emotional bait. You know, you become numb to bait to to uh towards emotion you don't you don't care anymore you know what i'm saying as you shouldn't you will become numb like when i arrived at the flat line you know was when i went to a pharmacy i went to a walgreens so i was looking for something to drink and i looked in there man and there was nothing i could drink there was everything had high fructose corn syrup which is artificial sugar that suppresses the body's awareness that it had too much sweets and then i'm like dude i'm in a pharmacy right this is supposed to be a place where they only sell healthy stuff and all this stuff to help you get healthy 
And, you know, for years, you know, I mean, this is old, but sometimes it takes a while for you to get to that point. Then it clicked in my head. It clicked, and I was like, wait a minute. This pharmacy has everything they need to have. They have stuff that makes you unhealthy to reinvest in a pharmaceutical. Then the pharmaceutical sells stuff that suppresses symptoms, not cures. You know what I'm saying? So then I realized and understood, man, this is how it is. This is how it is. They'll 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 literally sell something to get you sick and they'll sell something to kind of help you feel better. But at the same time, it's to stop the symptoms for a certain amount of hours. They're not selling any cures or anything to end the issue. It's a lot of prolonged or get you on a subscription. So number four. You have to, after you take the black pill, you have to take the gold pill. The gold pill is to be a global-minded man, which means to be an earthling. Because before you're Jewish, I mean, before you're, you're his Mexican, Indian, um, Jamaican, Haitian, African, American, you're an earthling. You know what I'm saying? All the nationality is basically where you were born on the earth. It does not change that you're an earthling first. So you once you arrive to that mentality of being an earthling, nothing domestically can... You don't even think of anything domestic. You look at the earth. The earth is your only care. You know, it's the earth is where you're traveling. The earth is where you're living. The earth is your only concern, you know what I'm saying, which is the ultimate level of freedom. This is why I say, number one, you have to be aware and prioritize traveling. That's why I said, number one, is you have to be aware that man's oldest hobby was traveling. That's why you got guys like QB saying travel maxing, and a lot of guys on the Manosphere saying travel maxing, and they're saying it like it's new. But it's engraved in us as a species for over a million years, however long our great ancestors or, you know what I'm saying, our evolutionary period, man's number one hobby was traveling. And this is older than the oldest um, job, what they say, prostitution. It's older than that. Man's traveling. So notice how I set up one, two, three, four. You know what I'm saying? I notice how I set them all up. It all leads to you becoming an earthling. When you become an earthling, you do not care. And the other thing the gold pill will solve is the fact that you as a man limit yourself. For example, there are men, and you'll see it where uh, you got, you know, the Aryan guys, you got the pro-blacks, you got a lot of men that will limit themselves on a particular type of woman or her nationality. And in reality, we're earthlings. It don't matter if that woman is from Kenya. It don't matter if that woman is from India. It don't matter if that woman is from uh, Brazil or whatever. Whatever in the globe you choose to, you know, have your child with a woman. It doesn't matter. It's That's still an earthling. That's still your, you know, an earthling incompatible with you. And that frees you. There's a lot of men, as I was saying with the nationalism thing, one thing I didn't mention when I was talking about number one is that they keep a lot of men trapped by a race baiting. You know what I'm saying? Where they bait you on, oh man, you know, you're a white man. You should only breed with white women. You're a black man. You should only be with uh, black women. And they make it, and another thing is when you look at interracial couples, they make it seem like, oh, God, wow, that's that's amazing. They're a interracial couple. It's so special. No, it isn't. It isn't special. They're two human beings. They're two earthlings just having children. Who? What is so special about that? It's not like you know a man sleeping with a Neanderthal. You know, a whole different species of human. It's literally the same. You know, we're just, you know, I've come to the arrival of is you got to look at yourself like this. You know, we're all earthlings. You know what I'm saying? You're an earthling. 
and all the different type of women as humans and as different humans are different breeds of human an Indian man is still a human like an African man an, you know what I'm saying a, a, a Caucasian man is an earthling just like a Native American man they're both earthlings you know what I'm saying? Once you arrive to that theory of being an earthling, you do not care about it. All this stuff starts to become just them creating divisionary tactics. Yes, we have different cultures. You know what I'm saying? If you're in India, you bring a different culture than someone that's from uh, Brazil. But at the end of the day, you know what you both are? You're, you're human. You're earthlings. You're, you're all earthlings and of the same species so what does it matter that's what that's why you have to i was gonna make this video maybe i wasn't ever gonna make this video you know thank you to doodle squatch you know thank you but uh the thing is this man you have to take the gold pill after you take the black pill you have to arrive to a global mind we have all this internet. We know we have Google Maps to actually look at other countries. You know what I'm saying? So there is no point in you as a man, you as a man, limiting yourself. Limiting yourself to your same race of, or should I say your same breed of human as you. Limiting yourself uh, to the same nation or country. No need to limit yourself. You're, you have to become an earthling. Once you become a man bound by the earth, you will see that this world is filled with solutions. You know what I'm saying? Nothing but solutions. And, and there's little pockets of, uh, you know, pockets of issues and delusions. You know what I'm saying? Once you look at that through a global eye, once you become a man of the globe, you no longer care. You know what I'm saying? You no longer care, dude. You become a man with a global mind. So basically, and you, when you close your eyes, you mentally are thinking about the world. Oh, man, man, I need to take a, a hot, I need to be on a hot beach. Oh, man, maybe maybe I may, might be going to the beaches of Jamaica. I might be going to the beaches of, uh, you know, Australia. I don't know. But somewhere, some beach in this world I'll be going to. You see, you become a man of solutions. You're always thinking of where can you go on the earth to get what you want. You know what I'm saying? So eventually you have to take the gold pill. Right after you take the black pill. And you know, I'll, I'll be making a video on the gold pill. Some guys are acting like, oh, there's too many pills. No, dude, there is always going to be many because each pill explains the mind state of a man where he's at mentally you know so there will be many more pills so you have to after you take the gold pill i mean the black pill take the gold pill and you will become an unlocked man you will basically be you know you will reach that unlimited potential you've been seeking of you will not think about anything everything becomes about solutions because you're always thinking about the globe and the earth you're always thinking about man where on the earth can i go to get what i want it's not about man can we fight we gotta get our men together for men's rights and and you know march and yell and scream on the streets to to fix the system you know what i mean you ain't gonna waste your time with that i mean as you can see right now this men are walking away you know what i'm saying and uh the birth decline in the in the westernized society where it's over feminized and government gets overly involved men are doing the number one thing of protesting they're not having any children you know what i'm saying it's the silent decay of a nation the way the way you decay a nation it'll take a while but as more men take their breeding out i mean it's at the point where what is it now sperm banks are out of sperm because of all the laws that have come in, where they'll literally put a man who donated his sperm on child support. So a lot of men are already doing it. You know what I'm saying? The birth decline in the U.S. is now, what, over 4%. And I guarantee they won't hear, the government doesn't care, the government won't hear anything until it reaches 
probably 10 to 20 percent then the government will be you know what um uh you know it's it's not enough like they're already you already see cracks of it with them um with them uh cracking on abortion rights where they're not gonna fund the government won't fund abortions anymore i think but the government will take too long to do anything now number five now number five i touched up on it on on my young young uh make young manosphere video touched up on it but number five for the modern man and this is the hardest one to swallow the hardest thing to be number five and you could have easily put number five at number one you know but number five i had to Put it at number five to get to this point. Number, number five. You know what I'm saying? Number five is you have to be absolutely comfortable in your manhood. You know what I'm saying? You do not bend. You do not bend. You know, you're a man. You know what I'm saying? You got to be comfortable in your manhood. And that means anybody that disrespects you as a man, you got to cut them off. You got to separate yourself. You have to value what it means to be a man, you know. And once you value manhood first, you'll overcome damn near anything. You know what I'm saying? So I'll give you an example of placing your manhood first. For example, I'll start off with uh, with uh, child support. And I did this before. So if if your significant other, for example, if you got to that point as a man where you have a child and your significant other says, you know, I'm I'm going to put you on child support. You know what I'm saying? You tell, you look that person right in the eye and you tell them, okay, you do that, I will not be, you do that, you've chosen to cut me out of your life. And I mean completely. You chose to cut me out of this child's life completely. You do something that disrespectful, I'm gone. I'm out. That child will never see me that child will no longer be treated as it's my child because I don't have a hundred percent access to that child and I'm basically paying to rent my own child so I will not be a victim of that and I will not stoop up to that because I'm a man <laughs> you know what I mean it takes you nine months to have a child it takes me um get another woman pregnant and maybe overseas I guess overseas since I'm a golden pill man or whatever hmm well yeah it won't take that long so to me you can keep the child if that's what you want you could have that I'm gone or you might even put yourself because you know having a child in this system what what could inevitably happen you'll put yourself on child support and give that woman a paper that says you're out, you know what I'm saying? You, maybe there was a sign she showed a little hint of disrespecting you and disrespecting how you protect, provide, and, you know, are the most sturdy aspect of her life, the most stable thing. So what you do as a man, you know what I mean? You walk away. You put that, you put yourself on child support. Out of, that's what you got to do to get the price done reasonably, whatever. So you do that, you give her the papers, just any sign of disrespect. You see, a lot of men don't understand that disrespect escalates. You know what I'm saying? If someone's willing to yell at you in your home, and think about this. Think about the relationship aspect, how, how messed up it is, to, you know, domestically. She'll yell at you, the man that she sleeps with, that literally she could trust without a shadow of a doubt but she won't yell at her boss so that means you're not as respected as her boss so if you see any sign of disrespect you got to be a man about it and that, that disrespect to what you you're doing and what you've done for this woman you step out of the relationship that's manhood right there you know what I'm saying? This is the reason I saved this for number five is that if I started at number one with, you know, 
be an absolute man, be absolutely comfortable within your manhood, most people would be too fearful. You know what I'm saying? Most men in today's modern society are too fearful of being a true man. You know what I'm saying? They're too fearful. You know what I mean? They couldn't absorb it. It would destroy most males in the modern society. You know what I mean? Uh, of being a man. You know, so to me, man, you have to understand and be comfortable with your manhood 100%. You know, when you put effort into somebody, they show you any disrespect, you got to cut them off. You know what I'm saying? Somebody's willing to, you know, you're in a relationship and that chick is yelling at you inside the house or just disrespecting you in a fashion she wouldn't disrespect her uh, her boss. You got to cut it. It's done. You have to become a one strike. There's only one strike when it comes to you because it can escalate. You know, next thing you know, she's making a scene in public. Things do not de-escalate in a relationship. It's all about them checking out where they can pinpoint your weakness and then it escalates. Well, I could disrespect him at home. I could disrespect him outside, you know, so that's the thing you got to understand being a man. You have to set boundaries. You have to prioritize your manhood and what you bring to the table. Another thing you have to understand as a man, and I've done this, I've mentioned this, is that you always bring more to the table. It doesn't matter. Like, uh, for example, if your girlfriend or whatever isn't a supermodel, then the looks she brings to the table do not have any economical value so if they don't have any economical value where her looks alone are buying food providing shelter then they don't really have any worth beyond your attraction and then those looks fade you know what i'm saying those looks fade dude you know so but your effort and your work ethic does not fade a man will work himself until he retires but those looks will fade so you have to look at what you bring to the table as a man. You bring stability. You know what I'm saying? You bring that work ethic. You have to look in that. And now another aspect of, you know, true acceptance of your manhood is that you have to understand that we are in an MLS. We are in a, and I made this video. If you didn't watch it, go watch it. It's called male limitation society that's what we're in we're in a male limitation society and this is an example of it you see who can settle down you know what does settling down actually mean a lot of men will say well it's when you grab a woman you love and you start a family no dude no a man settling down is a man choosing to align his fertility to the limited fertility of this woman. When a man chooses one woman to be with, you know, he's choosing to limit his fertility towards her own. You know what I'm saying? You know, so that man knows he could be 60. Like, you might wake up one day at age 55 and be like, damn, wish I could have a son again. I want me another child. And you look at your uh, significant other. And you realize, yeah, she's 50 and yeah, that ain't happening. You know what I'm saying? So you're limiting. And then we're in a pro-limitation society. You know, something a lot of men don't understand. Why is an older woman angry at younger women? You know what I'm saying? Why? You know what I mean? Why? Well, because these younger women can still provide a man a child. You know what I'm saying? They can still provide that man something she no longer can. You know what I'm saying? And that's a child. So that that's why a lot of older women hate in this society because you know, uh, you know, f you know, femininity is seen as weakness. You know what I'm saying? It's promoted that hey, you being at home with your children and family is slavery. But you doing 16 hours of work, that's freedom and achievement. So a lot of men need to understand. And you got to understand, oh, a man settles down, he's giving up more. 
especially in this limitation society where they've limited the amount of women a man could actually attach himself to. For some men, their limit might be having three women. Some might be two. Some might just be one. But at least allow that man to fulfill his true potential. But we're not in that society. We're in a society where they tell a man to align himself to one woman. And, and then eventually that man gets um, depressed because, you know, he's not done. He doesn't feel that. He doesn't think that he's, he's, yeah, he doesn't think and he doesn't feel that he's reached his peak as a man. You know what I'm saying? So to me, manhood, you got to be aware of that. That a man settling down is really him saying, I'm going to limit my fertility to yours. I'm going to attach and limit my fertility to yours. So men in a relationship are giving up far more than the woman they're with. Because that man will never be able to breed again or have another child. And it might be in him where he wants another child. He might he might have had two two kids from age 20 to 40. And out of nowhere, he wakes up at 41. He's like, damn, I want to have another child. But I know she can't give me that. Uh, well, you know the law. You know the marriage. You know the laws and all that crap. Child support. and uh, Man, let me, just, let me just carry on and live with this. Live with this limitation. So, you know what I mean? So a lot of men are giving up. And you have to be comfortable in your manhood. You have to be have to be absolutely comfortable in your manhood. And, and a lot of men in the modern society are not. But what about her feelings? What about this person's feelings? That feelings, 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 feelings. You know what I'm saying? Feelings that cannot help you get shelter or nothing. You know what I'm saying? Feelings. You as a man have to be truly comfortable in your manhood. Be aware of your manhood. Be aware of limitations. You have to. And be comfortable in your existence as priority as a man. Because if you're not in a you're not focused on your existence as a man, then you're basically a walking amount of weakness. You know what I mean? So a lot of men in the modern society, man, they they're just not comfortable in their manhood. They're not even aware that, you know, there's more women than men. And the other thing is, being comfortable with your manhood is that you, you'll see a lot of videos in the manosphere, they're talking about hypergamy, hypergamy, hypergamy. I mean, you, you could almost, you could almost, uh, almost close your eyes and picture all the men in the manosphere on like a, on a freaking, um, what is it, on top of a mountain just screaming, hypergamy. You know what I'm saying? The thing is this with hypergamy, you know, I made a video called State Funded Hypergamy. A lot of women live with a double-edged sword. The double-edged sword is the state is funding their hypergamy. And what that does, and it naturally for women, women are naturally domestic. Unless that country isn't the highest earner, they're domestic, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of women in the U.S., can only hi be hypergamous in the U.S. Unless, you know, overseas they can get con. Because I was talking to a dude, he told me, no, they're global. Yeah, they're global if they're contacted by someone overseas. But you won't see an Instagram model in the U.S. trying to get attention from people from France. She's trying to get attention from the men domestically. You know what I mean? So when she gets contacted by a guy from France... She'll, you know, if the guy wants to settle with her, he'll take her. Because France is still a top nation. See, the curse of a female's hypergamy and global awareness is that she can only go up with her hypergamy when it comes to the state. It's not that, you know what I mean? There, there's other cases, whatever, but there'll be a lot of mental aspects to it. But that's what happens, man. So, a lot of women are trapped in their hypergamy while a man and this is why i say when you take the the global you take the gold pill 
you realize that, dude, man, I'm a man. I could travel anywhere. I'm not. I'm comfortable having a kid anywhere. I'm comfortable starting a family anywhere. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter to me. I'm a man. I'm looking for what I want. You know what I'm saying? But the women, when they're accustomed to a certain lifestyle and safety that comes with it, they can't go down to a third world country. They can't go down. It can only go up or be at a country that's very similar. So they're trapped in their hypergamy. So you as a man, you have to, and I would stress this every man, please watch. If you're watching this video, make sure you watch my video MLS, you know, Male Limited Society. It explains everything on why your manhood is limited. The government's been limiting your manhood since, in America, since 1875 when they, you know, removed, uh, they made prostitution illegal. Then in 1890 when they made a man marrying multiple women or having multiple women illegal. You know what I'm saying? So you have to be aware that you're living in a male limitation society. You know what I'm saying? And by it being limited, there's only so much you can do in this society. You know, so we're in a male limitation society. And, uh, you know, these are the top five, man. These are the top five. I'm, I'm trying to see if I have a an extra... Do I have an extra six? Oh, yeah, 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 there it is. Nah, I'm still at five. You know, be number five. Like I said, be number five. Be true to your manhood. And like I, I touched up on this on young, young Manosphere, but if you have a son, let's say you have a son by chance in the States, and, you know, you didn't suffer from child support. You know what I'm saying? You didn't suffer at all. You, you were lucky. You know what I'm saying? Or you didn't get a bad hand. Or even if you did, you had child support. And now your son is old enough. You have to look your son in the eye and tell your son that you will, you will disown them. You will disown your son if he does not heed your words about continuing your bloodline domestically. If he does not heed your words and you tell him, yo, I've been through the ringer, son, child support, all this stuff. You know what I'm saying? That's why I had limited time in your life. I've been through the ringer, son. You know what I'm saying? So if you can, and if you do this and you repeat it, you're not my son. I've warned you. I've even brought you overseas to show you other solutions. You know, your dad's a, a gold-pilled man, man now. And if you act against that, I will disown you because you as a man have to what society's counting on since they've made men soft. You know, you feminize men is that, oh, he's just going to accept whatever we tell him. No, you have to raise the stakes. Since you know what's at stake is your son eventually repeating the process of being in child support, you have to raise the stakes and tell your son, yo, I will not be a part of another continuation of my bloodline where you're uh, gonna set us up to be enslaved and see you be enslaved where that child won't have a mother and a father so I will disown you if you do that if you go against my wishes as your father who taught you better we're done you know what I mean remember you're a man you can always have you know to be the bottom truth the, the cold hard truth you can have another son you know, another child overseas. So that's the cold, hard facts. The cold, hard, true facts. That's what it is, true facts. Because a lot of guys drop, that's facts. You know what I'm talking about. That's facts, whatever. But the true facts are, dude, you're a man. It, it don't take you nine months to have a kid. But you got to have that in mind, man. That if your son disrespects you by still investing in this society after you've taught him better globally then you have to let him know you'll be he'll be disowned now another aspect you have to understand as a man and to be true to your manhood I mentioned this on another video is that you have to if it's a shared custody 
type of aspect is in a shared custody 50 50 80 80 anything less than a hundred percent custody is failure you have to understand that you know it's the cold hard truth that it's failure this is your child and you have 50 percent custody 70 percent custody this is your child you know what i'm saying that's unacceptable so to me, man, like I mentioned with the child support thing, is any issue that comes to the point where you will end up not being able to be a full-time father figure in your child's life, you can't accept it. You have to tell the mother that if she does this, that child will not have a father. You will not accept less than 100% access to your child this is your child this is your son or daughter this is your or son and daughter or twins whatever the hell it is this is your children man you will not accept less than a hundred percent and if you can't have that you're walking away you know what i'm saying because the fact of the matter is this man the government has empowered women to not destroy men you know a lot of men aren't looking at it from a critical perspective, it's to destroy themselves and everything of value they can create. That's what the government has legally given women the ability to do. So what you have to do as a man is, man, if they offer you less than 100% custody and 100% access to your child, yo, that ain't your child, man. Why would you as a man have a child to have less than 100% access to your child. That's that's stupid. And then you're, you're, you're training your child that, yeah, they should be passed around like a goddamn ping pong between you and their mom. You know what I mean? That's, that's very stable. Then if that kid grew up in a situation where he had 50% custody, then he grows up and is like, you know what? It's okay if I have 20% custody. Then another one generation, it's okay if I have no custody. And I'll still pay and provide for a kid that I have no access to. You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. It's it's BS. I know a lot of guys going through it, but if you're honest with yourself, you can agree that it's BS. You know what I'm saying? And you might have to walk away. Because the true power of manhood, the problem when they've, when they've feminized the man is that this man has a child with a woman. She threatens to take that kid away and this man start, mm -hmm, starts whimpering and crying as though, you know, that's the only kid he could have had in his life. You know what I mean? He, Lord knows that was the last, last sperm he had in his body. You know what I'm saying? Lord knows he, he had to carry that child in his body for nine months. He had to give birth to that child and risk being alive, risk losing his life. You know what I'm saying? It's BS, dude. The thing is, you as a man, you have to understand and be aware of what it means to be true to your manhood. If a lady, if, if the girl you with says, I'm going to take your kid, I'm out, you tell her, so be it. I'm going to just fight in court to ease the price, ease the price of child support. And I will never be in that child's life again until they're 18 and choose to. I will not go homeless. I mean that. That's very good for the child's child's ment mental and psychology. That you fought the family court and went homeless, and now your kid comes to see you at 18, and you're homeless. That's failure, man. That's fighting a losing battle for nothing. That's that's basically a suicide mission, you know. So, to me, what you do is you you accept it and say, all right. I mean, I messed up having a kid in the States, so I'll have, I still want that experience of being a father, so I'll, I am a, now a global, a gold-pilled man, a global-minded man, so, you know, I messed up here in the States, made a bad choice, so I'll just go overseas and have my son wherever that country is, wherever I, I think it's comfortable enough for me to come there once a week to spend time with my son, video chat with him, whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's not like uh, it takes me nine months to have a kid. Oh, it doesn't take you nine months, does it? So you got to be true to your manhood, man. Another one 
that you have to understand and this is a reason why the birth rate is is just plummeting is that men are understanding and I made a video on this called biological stepfather that in the states be it the US UK wherever the laws are about the same when you have a child you become a biological stepdad because the state has control and your 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 wife uses the power of the state to literally decide how you can and can't treat your child with the threat that they could take them away from you at any time so you're basically like a stepfather but biological that's your child by blood but the real father in the household is the government and the mother is you know the mother of your child whatever so you as a man must be true to your manhood that's number five number five is be true to your manhood and I had to put it number five because if I told you this at number one it will be too shocking for you too shocking for most men to absorb this level of you know r you know raw truth you know what I mean you might have closed the closed the the video and went to your closet and started crying or went to your room and under your sheets and oh this is too much manliness too much why does he want me to be a man like this? Why can't I just be emotional and cry and bip, 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 whatever, you know? So you gotta be truly comfortable in your manhood. You know what I mean? You gotta avoid all the hurdles, but I like to, when I talk in his videos, also talk from a perspective of you made the bad choice, you know what I'm saying? And to empower yourself, you have to, why, what are you fighting for custody for? I've spoken to guys, well, yo, man, you know, I respect, you You will do, at the end of the day, you're a man. You could do whatever you want, you know. I don't have to respect what you're doing. I don't have to agree with it. But, you know, you want to go in court and spend thousands of dollars, and the state is just, just rubbing their hands, oh, just rubbing their hands oh man he's giving us so much money he's fighting for rights he should have had instead of understanding these rights are what he should have and it's illegal what's being done he's gonna keep fighting and keep giving us money you know what i'm saying he's a he's a goddamn idiot you know that's what that's how the state and family court are looking at it look at look at this guy volunteering to give us money and he won't even spend time with his kid so to me, man, you got to be truly comfortable in your manhood. And most men are not comfortable in their manhood. That's how feminized this society has made them to the point where men don't even understand what it means to be a man. They don't even understand the genetical aspects of being a man. The genetics, you know what I'm saying? The bio, you know, the biology of being a man. They don't understand it. This is why these guys are crying when a woman who had nine months who just had your child, you know what I'm saying, definitely made it damn near impossible for her to attract another man. You know what I mean? Unless he's a simp or whatever. But she made that choice. If she just wanted your seed, man, and you were foolish enough to give it to her, you accept that lost. You move on. And you let her understand that if I don't have 100% access to my child within a certain range of territory, a certain range of where I live and work, that ain't my child. You and the government could have that child. If there, if that child survives your, your mental destruction of them, they'll come see me when they're old enough. You know what I'm saying? A good example of this, y'all need to watch, man. You know, I don't. I don't respect everything 50 Cent said or does, but I do respect that man. He openly, when his son disrespected him, when he provided for his son and his son comes out disrespecting him, he disowned him. He openly disowned his son. Wants nothing to do with him. The amount of disrespect. Cause, and he has another son in a different scenario. This is what it means to be a man. Dude, you're, you're, you, you have thousands of you know, sperm in your body. You got thousands of children you can produce. You know what I'm saying? So you have to be truly comfortable in your manhood. Now, most people watching this video will be, oh, he's heartless. He's, 
He's just, you know, he's just cold. He's like a stone he, with these answers, man. Why isn't he emotionally invested? Well, um, I'm a true to my manhood. True to my... I could be a good brand of like a... Good brand of brandy. True to my manhood. True... Put the William Shatner for true to my manhood brandy. Just taste the flavor of manhood. Be a man. Drink true to my manhood. The greatest brandy and whiskey brand in America and globally. Made out of 100% pure. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a, you know. So, uh, you know, this has been a top five, man. Top five things the modern man should know. I think I had a six, but I can't remember it. Hmm. Well, yeah, yeah, here's six. Six would basically be, man, just be mobile, man. Be mobile. It goes back to number one. Be mobile. You know, don't fall for the trap of a house and all this stuff. Unless you're buying the land, the house don't matter. You know what I mean? It's a trap. Be mobile. You know what I mean? Be mobile. Look look at what happened with Conan 19 and this pandemic. You know, what what happened to those guys trapped paying mortgage when they shut down the entire country? They were done. And then why are you investing long term in a country that doesn't want doesn't like you anyway? For for the sex you are, so it is what it is. Number six, man, be mobile. Honorary number six, value mobility. You have to be able to travel at the drop of a dime. You you don't own any home. You don't even have, who knows, you might not even have an apartment. You might live in an RV. You're just prepared to move and chase the opportunity at any time. I made a video called Mobility is Freedom. Check that out. But uh, this has been Hold the Truth Hostage, where if the truth was so important, wouldn't negotiate with lies, we would hold the truth hostage. And shout out to uh, Doodle Squash. Thank you for this uh, subject matter. Peace.